Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike, tech, and maintenance-related questions. As ever, you can submit your questions down below in the comments section using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible within the allotted time. Oh, and it's a new year. Happy 2024, everyone. Right. Um, first up, it's actually not a question. It's actually a, a suggestion that's been written by someone, but it's great, and I wanted to share this with you um, as it's some, a really good point to make. So this is from Izzy941, and they say that wax isn't good for winter as it freezes um, and its material properties change. So whether you use wax should depend on where you're riding. Yes, absolutely right. The UK, the winters are pretty mild, although they're often very wet. Um, they don't get super, super cold. But when you're riding in very cold temperatures and, you know, five degrees and below, the wax isn't going to perform in the same way um, as it as it would do within you know its typical operating temperature, it becomes a lot stiffer, um, and so in those instances, yes, a sort of oil wet lube is going to be better. But as we always say, not all wet lubes are equal. Make sure you choose a good one. The independent testing is out there, one that doesn't attract loads of dirt like the uh, Silka Synergetic. Um, but yeah, good, really good point. Thanks for making that. Um, next question is from Cactus873. My titanium frame has some scratches. Can I polish them out? Yeah, you can. This is one of the great things about titanium. You can polish away to your heart's content. Um, and we actually saw this in a Moots video that we did uh, where they were refurbing Moots frames uh, by sandblasting them with a the fine sand. And that recreated that nice sort of dulled sort of matte finish that you get on their titanium frames. And, and they just looked as good as the day that they were, you know, first went out of the factory. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, personally, I don't mind if a titanium frame has a few scratches on it because it's still functional. It's kind of, I kind of quite like the sort of ruggedness of it. But yeah, that's just me. You can polish them out. Next question is from Pete Dannant, who says, Hi, Ollie and Alexa. <laughs> uh, how much does frame stiffness matter to the average cyclist? Uh, depending on the stiffness, is there a big difference? Um, because there's a big difference in frame, pr frame set prices, you know, do we really need a frame set that won't flinch under the onslaught of a pro sprinter on the Champs de Lise? Or are you better off investing in stiffer wheels and stiffer group set? Yeah, I think I think you are uh, better off spending the difference on on wheels um, in particular. The stiffness of a wheel, you really feel that when you start going around hairpin bends and banking round corners. Um, if a wheel is laterally stiff, yeah, they feel really great. It makes your bike feel like it's sort of cornering on rails. Um, the, the one thing to point out, though, is that the stiffness of a bike is not always proportional to the price. So there are instances where the super lightweight, super expensive model look like isn't necessarily as stiff as a slightly more substantial mid-range model of, from a different brand often. So factor that in. And also, too much stiffness isn't always the nicest bike to ride. So you get certain bikes where like the top of the range frame set is made from a higher grade stiffer carbon, but it's not quite as plush a ride as the mid-tier frame set that's not made of a higher modulus carbon sometimes, in that it, you feel a bit more vibration, it feels a bit more chattery when you ride it, and so sometimes you can find that the, the mid-tier one is nice to ride. Yeah, I agree, unless you're smashing out 1500 watt sprints every five minutes yeah it probably isn't isn't gonna make a huge amount of difference um and you're probably not gonna notice it so yeah i would i would save you money there i think for twice the price you definitely don't get twice the performance um Next question is Paul Ribbons1047, who says i have three bikes with ultegra hydraulic disc brakes Lucky you. Uh, on these bike setups, I regularly get a problem. The brakes become ineffective, resulting in me having to bleed the system after not using it for a couple of months. It's the RA050, and there are no signs of any fluid around the hoses, calipers, or levers. Any idea why this could be happening or any fixes? Right. So, what can happen is if you're setting these bikes up yourself and all three are having problems, it does suggest that there's a chance that it is you. Sorry, um, Paul Ribbons. Uh, but lightning is, is striking more than once here, to use that analogy. Um, and the Shimano components tend to be very reliable. So, although warranty issues can occur. Um, 
what could be happening could be you're cutting your hoses too long, and so therefore you're getting a kink in the internal hose. Maybe you're being a bit generous. And so that kink, and when you get a kink, it does will mean sometimes that when you pull the lever, nothing happens um, until you pump the lever a few times and it sort of resolves the kink inside the, the, the fork, for example. Um, so that can happen. The other thing is, is if you're not quite setting up um, the connection, either the connection at the lever or the connection to the caliper quite right. Um, and if you're not quite setting that connection up properly, there could be a tiny, tiny air gap. So fluid isn't coming out, but what it is allowing is air to come in. And so again, once you start getting air bubbles in, that's going to cause that spongy feel where nothing happens. And it's going to also give that, um, you know, that need to, to bleed the brakes that you're talking about. So I think they're two possible problems. Or you've been really, really unlucky and you've got defective levers. Um, which have got little problems on them. Either way, they, they, you should be able to warranty those, especially if they're within two years old. Um, so yeah, I would try those things and just be aware of that. We've got some very in-detail videos and we've got our maintenance book as well on how to uh, bleed and set up hydraulic brakes. So maybe just double, double check your homework. Uh, next is Dr. Al who says, hey, beautiful people, I have broad shoulders, 48 centimeters. Does that mean I should ideally use a 48 centimeter bar? That seems huge. I've always run 44 centimeter bars because that's what my bike came with. Thanks. Well, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. If you're comfortable on 44 centimeter bars, that's great. But, you know, a lot of track sprinters, big guys, um, and they kind of look like, you know, Donkey Kong on Mario Kart when they're sort of like riding their little, you know, 30 centimeter bars in the velodrome um, in the Olympics. People like, you know, Sir Chris Hoy. Um, but that, the key thing there is they're riding for very short periods of time. And what I found is that if I use really narrow handlebars, yeah, for a short ride, great, uh, fine. And you can get a bit more aerodynamic and all the rest of it. But if you're doing really long rides, it's often a bit more comfortable if you're doing endurance to be that bit wider. So yeah, I think if you're comfortable uh, being on a 44 bar, then stick with it. You could go see a bike fitter and they might be able to advise and help you. And you potentially could get a bar made that, that would be wider. Um, but just because your, set, your shoulders are that wide doesn't necessarily mean that everything needs to be in line. You can be in a bit shorter and still be really comfortable. So overall, I'd say go see a bike fitter um, if you want to, but if it isn't broke, don't feel the need. If you're not getting any sort of tightness in your shoulders or anything, then you know, you're probably fine. Um, and if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Um, there you go. But remember, narrower would be a little bit more aero, so maybe you could go a bit narrower too. Anyway, uh, that's all we've got time for this week, so hope you're having a great new year, and I'll see you in the next one. Keep your questions coming in down below, and we'll do our best to answer them. Love you. Bye.